Hello, hello. I've come to do some experimentation today and I'm gonna bring you along with me. So I'm gonna put this video up whether it works or not, um, which I don't always do. Some of this I've tried out before, some of it I haven't. So some of it I've tried and I don't know how it's gonna work right now. So we're gonna have a look at that together. I'm not 100% sure any of this is going to work. It all started with uh, Michelle Scott, who did a video on making your own mica sprays. And at the time, I had four um, distress inks that I was very close to finishing. This one, I think it's about here, just about, you know, just to the, the bottom of this label. And this one is a little bit more. I think this one's got, this one's to about here. Um, so I've purchased the new ones in readiness for these running out, but I thought I would utilise these to have end up having four lots of ink instead of just these two and these ones that are almost done. Um, so I'm going to use these to make something new um, because then obviously the bottle's ready to go. I know these bottles spray well. Um, I've had problems in the past buying bottles and they just don't spray. They're absolutely useless because I've done the, you know, where you take the marker part out of alcohol pens to make some alcohol inks and you know they, they looked fantastic and they worked really well except the bottles were absolute pants so I know these bottles are good I know we're good to go um, and like I said there's a little bit of ink in here and a little bit more in here and you can just experiment with how low you let the link go the ink go before you actually use it and how much alcohol you add to that basically I've made two of these inks already probably about a week ago. So we're gonna see how they work today because I haven't touched them since then. We're gonna do the same with these two, um, but I thought we would test the previous two out first. Um, and it is antique linen I've turned into a mica and bundled sage I've turned into a mica. Now I have kind of used um, a similar recipe to everybody else. I'm going to just shake these from side to side. I'm not going to shake them up and down like you would any mica spray or like you should any mica spray. I'm not saying we all do that because shake them up and down. I probably do, forgetting myself. So this is a bundled sage and I'm going to see how this one still works. This is like my heart's in my mouth now. And brilliant, doesn't work. <laughs> There we go. What's happened? Okay. Let's try the other one. Ah, this one works brilliantly. See the shine? Okay, so let me have a look at this particular bottle. Even though I've had this on its side is I'm actually going to take the pin out of my glue and just pop that up the edge. Okay, let's see if this will work. And take, I've got loads of this paper by the side of me ready to go. Ah, here we go. Can you see the shimmer on that? Okay, I've done pretty much everything I can to make this one work and it's not. This one is fine. Now, sprays no problem at all. This one, nothing. Um, I've cleaned the top, I've cleaned the, part, the pipe, I've taken the top off, I've stuck pins in every hole I could possibly find. Let's try one last time, nothing. What I would do from now on is take out, after I've used my spray, I won't waste it, I'm gonna spray Oh, that, wipe that up. 
spray anything that's left. You can actually see the mica flakes. So I think I know my problem, um, one of many, is I've put way too much mica in my sprays. So I'm going to clear out the head of my spray bottle. So this is empty and I'm going to flush this through with water and then I'm going to put it back in here empty. That is how I'm going to store my mica sprays from now on. I'm not going to do it right this minute because obviously we're filming. This, I'm not going to waste it. I am going to transfer this into another container of some sort. Um, and I will also soak the whole innards of this bottle um, for a longer period of time. So that's obviously, you've, we've all learned something there. Um, don't use too much mica and make sure you keep your nozzles clean. Anyway, let's get back to these. So I'm gonna do gathered twig first of all. So what you're gonna need is, I've, I've got 99.9% .9 isopropyl alco alcohol. It's a spray, but it doesn't matter. It's exactly the same stuff. It's just for cleaning this one, um, but I'm gonna use that. And for this particular one, I'm gonna use mica powder and I'm using strawberry red. Now, you can use the Dollar Tree eyeshadows that I've seen lots of people using, including Michelle. Um, I am using these because it's what I've got. Um, lots of people have used all sorts of different eyeshadows in their mica sprays. Um, so I've got a pair of tweezers, I've got my isopropyl alcohol, I've got my mica spray, and I'm gonna take the top off this. Take the top off my alcohol. If you do not like the smell of alcohol, this is probably not something you want to do. Um, I'm just going to pour in a bit. I'm not filling this up. I'm not using any particular recipe. Um, I'm going to start with less alcohol than I think I need because you can always add more if the colour is too intense. And then I'm going to take my mica powder I'm grabbing the end of my tweezers and I'm going to put in, I'm going for two. In the one that's blocked, in those two, I put in four. So I'm going to just put in two. And this is just a case of trial and error until you get something you're happy with. Now, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put the lid on and then shake what I did before was I put my glove on and I gave it a good shake without the top being on it's just oh I missed a step I've missed a step okay so anyway we'll talk about this there is you can see the mica coming through now what's going to happen is this is just going to the mica eventually is just going to dry and it's going to rub off because there's nothing um to make that mica stick to your paper it's not going to stick to alcohol it's not going to stick to ink so we need some kind of adhesive now what i use glossy accents because it dries clear I told you this was a one-shot deal. <laughs> it might not go to plan. Forgot my glue. So I'm just going to give it a squirt. And I don't put in a load. Just one squirt is all I'm putting in. If it was full, then I might put two. But I'm just putting in one. One squirt. We need something to make that mica stick to your paper. But it needs to be something that's going to dry clear. Um, you could also try maybe, uh, Michelle used a hairspray, a liquid hairspray, you could try that. Um, I didn't have any, so I did have glossy accents, so that's what I used. Um, obviously, once you've got the glue in, it does need to have a really, really good shake. Okay, I can see no white glue residue around the bottom of that, so let's give this a try. You can just about, um, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. You can just, can you see that mica? 
so that's worked really well um, just double check it's worked yeah you can see the mica in that so that one is good to go um, like I said I'm gonna actually um, remove this and clean it before I put this away to store let me just grab my um, I grab my sharpie and I'm just gonna write mica on there so I know that's not my general distress ink and I'm gonna put that over there so the next one is walnut stain let's do this correctly this time um, we're about we're about here on the bottle um, I'm just gonna double that with alcohol Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, this <laughs> brilliant. That's not that's not spraying particularly well. Oh, that looks cool though. Can you see? We'll come back to it once it's dry. Okay, that's experiment number one. <laughs> um, I'm like I said, I'm going to take these out, clean them put them back and then I'll take them out and shake these before I use in the future. I mean, it's not that big a deal. It's not that big a deal at all. I'd actually really love, I don't know if you can see that blue picking up on the camera. Looks really cool. Does look really cool. Right. So the next experiment is I'm going to attempt, attempt, and I use that very loosely I'm going to attempt to make oxide, um, oxide inks. This is absolutely not my idea. Um, it's from Stacy from Poodle Crafts. I, I watched this, I think the same day I watched Michelle and I thought, I've got to do that. I've got to have a go because why not? Why not have a play and see what you can do now? The thing is, I had a look, then I did a search, and nobody else has done anything similar to what Stacy did. That may be because the product she used is probably available quite easily if you are in the US, but I am in the UK and nothing. Couldn't even get it shipped from um, the US, wouldn't, wouldn't be shipped. And I could not find an exact match to that product at all. Now, I think, I can't remember the brand. I will link Stacey's video down below. But she used something called titanium oxide pigment or white titanium or titanium white oxide pigment. And it was in a pot and it was a certain brand and there's nothing. We have in the UK nothing called titanium oxide. So I'm going to attempt using a completely different product to see if I can get the same results that Stacey got, but with a different product. Now I'm using, and for those of you in the UK, this is where it comes from, SFXC. And it is called titanium dioxide pigment. There are a load of health and safety warnings around this. It says it can cause a mild irritation to your hands and to your skin and to wash it. It's not dangerous. Um, as far as I can tell, you will have to do your own research. It's not what, you know, I would say this is, this is just as bad as this. But I do not know if this titanium dioxide pigment, it sounds as though it's going to do the same thing. 
but I don't know. It just says basically, if on skin, gently wash with plenty of soapy water, wear protective gloves, protective clothing, protect your eyes. I don't intend on getting this in my eyes, so I am gonna be extremely careful with it. And it's just a white pigment. It's all it is. It's from an arts, it, this is an art supply um, place and it does various other materials, but it's, you know, they do a lot of art supply materials here. So we're going to try this, we're going to try it and we're going to see if we can get anything, anything similar to the, you know, the results Stacey got. I'm also going to try something different in terms of the product. If the first product works, I'm going to try something different for the second product. I don't have any more spray bottles, so I am making mine in these two little containers with pipettes. Okay, so I'm going to use these. Um, I, t I have got some oxide sprays and I have got some oxide ink pads. I tend to put them on here and spray with water. So most of the time, I think, you know, for now, this is going to suit me fine. And I'm going to use Broken China because it's a it's a blue. It's a different um, it's a different blue. Um, now, obviously, the color of this is not going to be the same as the color of that because we're adding white. So everybody knows what happens if you add white to a color. It's going to change the color. So I'm not expecting it to be exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a really small amount of this because, like I said, I could be wasting all of this. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit in here. That will do. I don't know if you can see. There's not a lot, not a lot in there at all. That's going to be fine. With this, we are not going to add any water at all we are gonna I'm gonna use my going back to my tool and I'm gonna just see what happens on try number one now I'm gonna like I said this may be nothing like the product that Stacy used I haven't even opened this oh there we go all I've done is torn the top tear piece off okay here we go now Stacy used a pestle and mortar to break hers down I'm just going to try I've got one little scoop I'm not going to do that up I'm going to stand it there now what can I hold? Because this is too big for my thumb. Um, I want something to... Actually, I can just put the lid on because this is a poupette. We've got no worries about this. Let me give it a shake. Da, da, da. So for, the, for this, I'm going to put a small spray here. I'm just going to rub that in a bit. So that's ink as it was. That's ink as it was. So this is one scoop in that tiny amount of ink and I'm going to put one, I can already see the, the whole um, look of this has changed. Okay, look at that. Right, I'm going to dry it. Okay, so first of all, you can see what that has done to the colourant. Um, of the uh, the ink and also the kind of the opacity of it so now what I'm going to do is you know the big oxide test I suppose I'm just going to spray that with water I'm going to take my baby wipe and I'm going to oh, oh my days oh how exciting can you see can you see Okay, that's quite a subtle effect, but there is definitely, definitely some stuffy going on there. Right, okay. Um, I want a little bit more of a reaction, so I'm just going to make sure there's no ink in my pipette. I'm going to go in with, what we've got one scoop in there at the moment, I'm now going to go in with a second scoop. And don't forget, there was a really, really small amount of ink in that bottle. You can still see. Can you, can you see? Not much ink in there at all. 
in actual fact you can see how little I've taken out of that bottle. More shaking. Okay, let's try. Get a little bit more. Okay, we've got a different consistency yet again, a different opacity and a slightly different shade. I've probably put a little bit too much on here. Let's just run that down and then we can try and get some different effects. I probably used half of the ink in there now. <laughs> okay, I'm going to dry this one. Okay, so you can see again a slight variation in that colour. Give it a spray. I'm going to just lift a little bit with my... I'm going to try and pop on a couple of bigger drops. Okay, I'm going to dry this. Okay. Definitely, definitely getting some reaction. Now what I'm going to do last of all is I'm going to give that one more spray of water and I'm going to put that aside to dry naturally. So the next thing I'm going to try is just going to put a small amount. I mean the great thing about this is you can make up a small amount depending on what you want to do with it. You don't have to make up a whole spray bottle. You don't have to make up a load. I'm going to put quite a bit of ink on there and then I'm just going to drag this around and see if we get a similar kind of effect that we get with the oxides. I did put a lot of water on there. Okay, I'm going to give it a dry. Okay, I want to try and get a bit more of a comparison of, of what effect this titanium dioxide has had. So I'm going to put one little spray of the actual ink and again a load of sprays of water like I did on this one and I'm going to drag that through the ink also and I want to just compare what they look like and how they react. Okay, it doesn't look like a huge amount of difference here um, so let's spray a little bit of water on both of these and lift, lift it. Okay, I'm going to dry them. Obviously, um, that's the ink. You can see, obviously, a little bit here where I've sprayed the water um, and on here. That looks amazing. OK, let's go back to this one that I let dry naturally. Definitely got a much... We've definitely got a more reaction when it's dried naturally and where this is a lot thicker. Now, um, we could carry on and add another scoop of oxide in there, but obviously now there's a lot less ink than we had before. Um, but I think this is definitely successful and it's definitely worth trying. So it is titanium dioxide pigment if you are in the UK from SFXC. So that was that's fun. What I want to do now is see if I can get this to work. Now I know it's going to work on the ink, on my black calligraphy ink. Um, oh, that's the same pot. I need to need a new pot. Um, I really want to see if it will work on a calligraphy ink as well as a distress ink. So I'm just going to... I've got, I've, this is in my fine tip bottle. Um my large bottle is just it's over there and it's just a pain to get out because it's behind a load of stuff now I'm only going to do a really really tiny amount just to see how this powder will work so because this is not a distress ink it's a calligraphy ink and it will probably work different if you use a quink 
ink. So there's a very small amount of ink in there and I'm still going to add one, one scoop. I mean that powder is going to last, it's going to last a long time. Okay, little tiny bit in here but I'm still going to give it a really good shake because that there's obviously less liquid for that powder to dilute into. Okay, I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to start with a control sample. Nice and black. I'm expecting this to be obviously slightly grey. Although that's not at the moment, that's still very black. Right, I'm going to dry that little sample. Okay. So far, this is the ink, that's the dioxide I added. Let's give it a spray. Okay. That seems to have done very little at the moment. Yeah, that's not that's not happening. So let's add more. That's still very black. I'm going to try droplets. Okay, that is not going to work. Going to actually, there's very little ink left in here now. So that's the calligraphy ink. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and see what other inks I've got. I've got an Indian ink. I don't know if that would work. I think, to be honest, it's got to be a really, it's got to be a water soluble ink. That would make sense, wouldn't it? It's got to be a water soluble ink. Um, so this is not going to work, but I'm not going to waste this. I think let's try something. I only have one of these these inks. It's quite pigmented, so let's see if we can get anything out of this. Um, and I'm going to add it straight to my black. I'll just put put a nice little glug in there and I'm just going to add another scoop of the dioxide and shake this that's a rather interesting green okay let's dry it I'm still not 100% sure we're going to get any reaction out of this We're getting, uh, you, there is something there, but it's definitely not oxidisation as we would really hope for. No. We're getting something, but it's not, it's not like that. I think it's worth playing with this. I think it's definitely, that is is definitely successful. Let's have a little look at these mica sprays again and see if they are still gonna spray. I'm doing it sideways. Okay, let's see. Oh, this is the this is the bottle that is a bit pants. It's not spraying particularly well. You just need to make sure there's no mica left around the bottom. This one is much more, much more pleasing to me. yeah they're okay they're okay i think my favorite one is the gold that i did that still works okay i've i've come back to this one which worked really well before and now nothing nada um 
I have got to say, I think I will use this ink. I will obviously have to use it in other ways. And, you know, this, this sprayed 15 minutes ago and now it doesn't. So I'm not 100% convinced mica sprays homemade are my thing. Um, I think it's a waste. I think it's a waste of ink and it's a waste of mica powder and I'm not happy with them. This one works fine for now. Um, but it's worth having a go, I suppose, if you've got leftover inks and mica powder. Um, I, these bottles I knew worked really well and now they don't. So it's got to be the mica powder and very probably somebody is going to tell me it's because this nozzle is for ink and it's not for mica spray. And if I used a mica spray bottle, maybe there's something magic in there which will make it work. But this ink will get used. It's just not going to get used in these spray bottles, I don't think. Anyway, that was my little... I think I made a bit of a boo-boo somewhere. Is this the mica one? I'll tell you how I can tell. I can smell it. Yeah, that's the mica one. Still sprays at the moment, but I do need to write mica on that so I do not mistake that for my general ink. So, experimentation. DIY mica stains. Not so successful. DIY oxide. Much more successful. I just need more vessels to experiment and make more. So this stuff clearly does a very similar thing to Stacy's stuff. And like I said, I'm going to put that link down below. Um, and then once again, here is your shop for getting this in the UK if you want to give it a try. Um, I said I would put it out no matter what happened. You can give it a thumbs down if you like. Please do give it a thumbs up though. We'll see you all really soon. Take care. Bye.